The Wabash River is important to a lot of people for a variety of reasons. They love to fish in the river and recreate. They also get their drinking water from it. And ultimately, it's an important avenue to drain this agricultural land for us so that we can farm it and produce the food and fiber we need. The Nature Conservancy works with partners up and down the Wabash River to restore the floodplain, to put it back into trees and wetlands as much as possible. And then secondly, we want to work with farmers in the watersheds that drain into the Wabash River so that they can do things like improve their soil quality, improve their productivity while they're reducing soil erosion that ends up in the river. My dad bought the original home place that we're standing on in 1960. My dad was the ultimate conservationist and I grew up every summer doing conservation projects and we've continued that trend today. After we'd been into the no-till a few years, it dawned on us that it was far and away the most cost efficient thing to do things and then the big bonus was the lack of soil erosion that we began to experience almost immediately. We've absolutely maintained our yields and without a doubt improved our yields on our tougher soils, our high erodible clays, our droughtier sands and now we're, as we go on we're learning that if we add cover crops we can even improve the situation, improve soil health faster. I'm a, a farmer just like most, interested in the bottom line, but with cover crops that are in this field and with the never-till system that I use, nutrient management and the technology that's available on our equipment today, uh, we're doing a lot of positive things that allow me to be very conservation-minded and to really be successful as a farmer. And, you know, after a while I decided I don't want to do it just on my own land, I want to try to work with other farmers and landowners to try to get them to do conservation. You don't just have an idea and expect farmers to grab onto it and do it. You need people out there that work with them, that demonstrate. Luckily now, uh, there's lots of people, there's lots of partners, uh, T and C being one of them, that are doing just the same thing. And uh, we have a slake test. It's a test where we uh, take soils out of a conventionally tilled field and a no-till field and we do demonstrations right there on the tabletop where farmers can see one field versus another. So what we're going to see is the, the differences between how the raindrop affects the two different situations that we have. Yesterday while we were out, uh, we went to a no-till field that had just gotten some cover crops planted. This area over here has been tilled and going to be left bare until the spring planting. There's no residue, no, no plants that are going to protect that soil from the raindrop. So I've got a cup of water for each. I'm just going to pour them in there right now. And you can see we already have runoff. The water's hitting the surface and some of that water is going through the soil profile into the groundwater. Both surface and groundwater are cleaner. Imagine what that can do to our environment, if less of this water runs out into the Wabash and is held in the soil, how, how much of a difference do you think that will be to the, the quality of life in the Wabash River? And when we have good soil health in the watershed, I guarantee you we will have good health in this Wabash River. It's good, but we want to take it to great because it has the potential to be truly one of the gems of the Midwest.